Today's apologists claim evolution must be directly observed to be scientific. Unfortunately, creationists often have a seriously flawed understanding of how science works. For example, Answers in Genesis claims that neither creationism nor cosmic evolution nor Darwinian biological evolution is observational science, and they are not observable, testable, repeatable, falsifiable events. Therefore, we would state that you cannot empirically prove them. Both creationists and evolutionists have the same sets of data, the same evidence, and often the same techniques to examine their evidence. The different conclusions, therefore, must be based on presuppositions or worldviews. That entire paragraph is profoundly wrong on every level, and here's why. First off, we actually have directly observed evolution. As I've noted in other videos, we've bred domestic animals like dogs, cats, cows, pigs, sheep, turkeys, and pigeons to be genetically distinct from their wild ancestors. We've taken advantage of unique mutations and crossbreeding to evolve a species of grass into corn, to evolve a tiny wild fruit into large tomatoes, to evolve an inedible and seed-filled green fruit into tasty long yellow bananas, and to evolve a single wild mustard plant into domestic cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, gai lan, kohlrabi, collard greens, and savoy, all of which appear distinctly different from each other. And in just the past few decades, we've observed organisms as diverse as E. coli bacteria and crayfish evolve into dramatically new species. All these examples are observed Darwinian biological evolution in action. The only difference between them and, say, single-celled organism to human evolution is reproductive isolation and time. Next, the claim that you can only empirically prove observational science, that is, events that are directly observable, testable, repeatable, and falsifiable, is wrong on a couple of levels. First, in science, a hypothesis or theory can only ever be proven false, never true, because it's always possible that future evidence will contradict the explanation. Second, you do not have to directly view an event in order to conclude it occurred. The only thing that matters is that the evidence left by the event can be observed. An easy-to-understand refutation of the creationist claim is forensic science. This is the science used to determine the who, what, when, where, why, and how of a crime, even if that crime occurred unobserved. Forensic scientists study evidence found at the crime scene, like fingerprints, DNA, gunshot residue, material fibers, soil chemistry, tire tread patterns, blood spatter, etc., to determine the details of a crime, often with a very high level of confidence. What they don't do is first decide who committed the crime and then ignore any evidence that contradicts that claim. And they definitely don't assume some supernatural criminal over a natural one. Their conclusions come from the evidence, not the other way around. Evolutionary science works exactly the same way, only using different tools to study the different types of evidence available. Evolutionary scientists use transitional fossils and fossil order, radiometric dating, chromosomal mutation rates, ERVs, biostratigraphy, comparative anatomy, plate tectonics, and so on. And just as forensic scientists can accurately determine who committed a crime and how, evolutionary scientists can accurately determine when a species lived and how it is related to other species. No direct observation of the events is necessary, just the evidence caused by those events. Evolutionary scientists don't have to twist the evidence to fit a predetermined narrative the way creationists do. And finally, the claim that conclusions must be based on one's worldview demonstrates a fundamental misunderstanding of how science works. In science, it's the evidence that determines what the conclusion should be, not the conclusion that determines how the evidence should be interpreted. That's the difference between science and religion. Creationism starts with the conclusion of biblical inerrancy and then seeks to make the evidence fit that belief, whereas scientists study the evidence, which leads them to conclude evolutionary theory. 
In other words, creationism works completely backwards to how scientific theories work, which is why creationists are so susceptible to confirmation bias and ignoring evidence that doesn't fit their narrative. So, when creationists claim that evolution cannot be empirically proven because it is not observable, testable, repeatable, or falsifiable, know that they only make this claim because they recognize that creationism can't meet the basic requirements of the scientific method, so they must find a way to make evolutionary theory seem just as unscientific. Fortunately, well over 99% of scientists in the relevant fields are not so gullible. Unfortunately, many conservative religious people are, and that's why it's necessary to expose creationist deception about how science works.